Chris Veronis, Tradiga Securities. Good morning, Chris, and thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Chris, what's actually driving the price action today? Yeah, I think there's certainly at least the expectation of some relief out there. We've seen, um, basically starting with yesterday's reversal in the U.S., we've seen global markets uh, follow as well. But I just want to be mindful of a couple things. And you know, one thing we've noted in our work is we just don't get the sense that there's a lot of fear out there yet. And one way we look at that is through put calls. And you did not get a big spike in put call ratios over the last several days. That's a little bit troubling to us because if you look at every major market bottom over the last you know, 10, 15, 20 years, you tend to get a lot of anxiety in the options market. And we really haven't seen that yet. So listen, I do think we can bounce here. The market certainly seems to reflect that, but just be mindful. There's resistance on top of us. It's very possible a lot of these big markets are in bear markets. And when you're in a bear market, you have to be skeptical of rallies. Are you concerned about, uh, actually we saw inflation data just a few seconds ago and probably the most important indicator over there is the, the core PC price index year over year at 5.2% versus 5.1% expectations. Um, if we take a look also at a month on Vermont, it's 0.5% perfectly in line with expectations, but still numbers are, are pretty high. Uh, so I was wondering, what do you think is gonna be the market's reaction in case we're gonna see an aggressive Fed just a few weeks a um, few weeks later. Well, I think the, the big takeaway here is what we've already seen out of the bond market. And in this equity market drawdown, bonds have not been defensive. Bonds have not been a hedge for stocks. And you know, that's a major change. And even you know, look here, 10 year yields are still roughly over 2%. So uh, in, in this great global conflict, in this, um, this, this, this risk that the Fed may bring, we have not seen bond yields go down. This is the first market correction in stocks in the QE era where bond yields have not gone down. That is a major, major character change. And I think it sp uh, speaks to or spells the death of risk parity, right? Risk parity, bonds as a hedge for stocks have really been part of the conversation for the last 12 or 13 years. That doesn't seem to be the case uh, here anymore. Are you concerned that uh, we're gonna see even deeper correction when it comes to, to, to US equities? I think in the short term we rally here and I think we can probably rally S&P back to 4,500, maybe 4,600. But I think at the very least as we move through summer um, and into spring, we may have to revisit or even undercut some of these lows. And I think it's frankly more a question of not whether you make a new low or don't make a new low, but what the leadership looks like. And I still think that this leadership regime is moving away from the growth stocks. It's moving away from the triple Qs. It's moving away from the tech stocks and more to the value oriented corners of the market. I think the bond market reflects that as well with yields um, uh, uh, staying up here around 2%. So I would be skeptical of the rallies in the growth and the techs and the real speculative corners uh, of this market. And what do you think is the major risk for markets from one side, of course, geopolitical tensions from the other side? Uh, we, we do have Fed and, and, and another buzzword, if you want to call it like that, which is stagflation. A lot of fears in terms of stagflation. So uh, in terms of risks for markets, what, what's your, uh, how can I say, major headline? I think the, the major risk uh, out there is very simply that you have a geopolitical conflict without the benefit of a Fed put, right? Think about every major geopolitical event over the last couple decades, and the Fed has been there to provide liquidity. I mean, we're in the exact opposite condition right now. We have a geopolitical event and the Fed is removing liquidity um, uh, here. So I, I think that's number one. I think the second thing we just got to be a little bit on guard for, you know, we've seen consumer discretionary underperform as oil has gone up. Are the discretionary stocks beginning to hint at some recessionary message for maybe 2023? That's on our radar. I think it's early to make that call, but it would be silly if we didn't think about it. You know, what I do want to watch is the financials. Financials tend to peak well before market tops or well before recession begins. So financials have held in there pretty good. We'll watch that here going forward. Yeah, we do see, by the way, the KB index uh, trying to bounce back after yesterday's minus 1.65%. Of course, we're talking about the entire uh, financial sector uh, on the S&P 500. Final take, Chris, which is on the dollar index, uh, a lot of volatility over there as well. We do see the DXY at 96 point. 
um, 78 euro dollar 1.1236 and let me ask you this I believe extremely difficult question what's your near-term target when it comes to the euro dollar my gut on dollar is US dollar lower and it, it really goes back to what we know about what the dollar does around Fed hikes and I know it sounds counterintuitive but dollar actually tends to peak as the Fed begins to raise rates. Now, this may be complicated this time because of what's going on geopolitically, but you know, even over the last couple of days, the dollar's up. I would have suspected dollar would have actually been stronger with everything going on in the world, and that really hasn't happened. So I'm a skeptic of dollars here. I think US dollar lower over the next number of months uh, should be the base case. Thank you very much, Chris Brown Thank you. Strategic Securities. Thank you for joining us and have a great weekend ahead. Me too.